Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today I wanna to share five awesome tips to help you build better financial models in Excel. Before we go ahead and get started, I just want to take the opportunity to thank every one of you that's been supporting us with Magnimetrics, writing feedback, giving us suggestions, and uh, yeah, if you still haven't, you can try Magnimetrics absolutely for free. The first link in the description below is where you can get your free beta account. Short disclaimer, I'm 100% sure that those are not the only five things that you can do to improve your financial modeling, but for me personally, over the years, those five have had the most impact and that's why I wanted to share them with you. And um, yep, yeah, by the way, if you're enjoying the content, thumbs up will be awesome and a sub to the channel will be amazing. Let's go ahead and get started with tip number one. Tip number one, start with outlining the flow of your financial model. And I'm talking even before you open Excel. What I usually do is I grab a piece of paper and I start writing all the components. Here I have sales, cost of goods sold, SGNA, spare part expenses, and those build my income statement. And then on the top, I'll put in all the pieces from the balance sheet. And I'll use the balance sheet and the income statement to build the cash flow statement. And this would pretty much lead me to my model output. Then I'm gonna link all those to show the flow. And uh, because I have some of the balance sheet items also um, interacting with the income statement, I'm also gonna link those with red just to make sure that I notice them. And also my spare part expense would be influencing my uh, working capital. And sales will go to AR and Cox and SGNA will go to AP. Income statement and balance sheet will also go to the overall model output and uh, usually even cover those just to keep it more uh, like visual. And that's it. I will always have this before I even open Excel and start building up anything in terms of model logic. It's even helpful to reproduce this uh, in terms of like a flow chart or something like that and have it in uh, the model file itself because it will help you keep your spreadsheets organized and it will also help uh, users of the model to see how things flow in terms of logic. Tip number two, always document your assumptions. In this model here, I have all the assumptions in the respective tabs, but uh, sometimes it might make sense to have like a separate sheet with all your assumptions listed in one place. This is the, the approach I took here and uh, you see that uh, Next to the assumption, that's my interest expense is 1.75%. I have a documentation. And even though it's quite simple, now that it's been like a year since I built this model, I can instantly look at my documentation here and figure out what my thought process was back then. For intangibles, I have my uh, amortization assumption, which is monthly, and it's based on an average useful life of existing assets of circa 1.7 years have the same thing for PP and so on and so forth. And it might seem a bit unnecessary, but uh, once you start looking at your models from a few months back, it would be much easier for you to understand what you were doing, where your head was at. And uh, it's also much easier for other users that don't have the context that you have about the company. Tip number three is to use consistent formatting. And I cannot stress this enough. Look at those sheets here. So I have everything in blue here. I have the blue, the green. Here again, I have the blue, the green, and the black. And I use a consistent formatting for my numbers in terms of colors. So the blue numbers are constants or input numbers. No matter what I change in terms of structure of the model, those would remain the same. Black numbers are ones that are being calculated here on this uh, on this tab and they don't require anything else from other tab. And the green ones are linking to either other tabs or external files. Let's say the working capital forecast here, by, by keeping this formatting, it's really easy for me to go in here and, uh, and quickly figure out what numbers rely on other data, what I'm doing here in terms of calculations and so on and so forth and as your model grows larger, this could really help you uh, like find errors or uh, even, even figure out inconsistencies between different parts of the model. The other thing in terms of consistent formatting is that if you look at the top here, I have the same elements starting at the same places. 
So I have B2, it's always my working work name, just the name of the tab. Then I have the company and then I have the currency down here and this is consistent throughout the whole model. Tip number four is to always introduce validation checks and scenarios, maybe even some sensitivity analysis to make sure that you significantly reduce the possibilities of errors. What I have here at the top is I have four validation checks and those return either zero or one and then I'm using conditional formatting to turn them into icons so they're quite visual. And uh, that way if I mess up something uh, and uh, my tree statement doesn't match or my uh, cash flow doesn't uh, reconcile to the balance sheet, I'll instantly notice this here and uh, be able to go through the model, figure out where the error is coming from and, and fix it. And the other thing that I have here is I've done some scenarios and uh, those are like the, the most basic type of scenarios, just taking like a few of the, of the assumptions. And uh, here those are like the, the key assumptions, the sales price and uh, the, the cost of materials and just increasing them or decreasing them by 1% in order to be able to see what happens with the whole model. And uh, I have a drop down here, a best case scenario, everything is green. But if I go to the worst case scenario, you immediately notice two things. So no longer meeting my bank covenant and I actually need 17 million additional EBITDA to meet the covenant. And uh, also my cash becomes negative from June, which is quite bad. And that's what breaks the validation here. It's not an error. It's still calculating properly. It's just that the company is not generating enough. And this is by only decreasing the sales price by 1% and increasing the material cost by 1%, which means that, uh, that this model is quite sensitive towards sales price and material cost as it should be. And, uh, and those are where all the effort should be put um, for the company. But uh, nonetheless, uh, you see the, the importance of having proper validation checks and also doing some uh, stress testing by adjusting different assumptions slightly just to see if that breaks the business model for the company. And tip number five is to just keep it simple. There, there's nothing to show here, but uh, it's probably the best advice. Not sure about you, but uh, whenever I work on a model, I tend to like really get into it. I'm excited that it's coming together uh, great and, uh, and I tend to like over engineer different components just because uh, I want to give them like all the functionality in the world. But uh, this is a really, uh, really bad idea actually, because uh, usually those can be solved much more straightforwardly. You need to figure out who is going to use your model and what they'll be using it for. Because if all the users are just gonna go and look for an, like year over year changes, then it really doesn't make sense to go in and build this uh, amazing forecasting model because no one's going to use it. And you're just overcomplicating something that can be uh, achieved much more simply. There you have it, guys. Five awesome tips to help you skyrocket your modeling game in Excel. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even punch the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.